Well, it's Power Amplifier Day here today because this is uh, the second one I've had. This one's a Techniques, and this one has no sound. And this one's now mine because the guy that owns it says, I don't want it, it's worthless to me. You might as well hang on to it. That's what I get for doing buddies' favors and fixing them stuff for free. I sometimes get some nice pieces. Hello, Techniques. SUV9. This is a stereo integrated direct coupled amplifier. This was a high end Techniques. What they called a new Class A. What new Class A did was at low power levels, up to about 9 watts, it operated as a Class A single ended design. And once you increase the power, it would then switch over or transition to a Class AB to give you high power but the, the, a clean Class A sound at low power levels. And this one, it's only working on one channel. I have a feeling we have a switching problem on this. Nice thing about this amplifier, which could be mine, um, it supports moving magnet and moving coil for phono. So moving coil for phono one would support 100 microvolts, 250 microvolts for moving magnet 25 and one millivolt. And phono two was a 25 millivolt. So it could work for two types of, first of all, two turntables, one with a moving coil and one with a moving magnet cartridge or two moving magnet cartridges, depending on the sensitivity, the, the output level. Some of the moving magnet ones were also very low output, you know, one millivolt. Most of them were 25, but there were some that were one millivolt output. And of course, moving coil, 250 microvolt or 100 microvolt for phono number one. The record selector, you could have tape dubbing two to one, one to two, off. Record from the phono, record from the tuner, and record from auxiliary. So that was also nice. And of course the main input selector. Tape 2, tape 1, phono, tuner, and auxiliary. And this is where I'm considering that the problem is probably in here. Aha. Yeah, that's where the problem is. This switch has got a problem. Now it's got nothing, you see? We have a problem with the switch. Let's take this thing apart. One thing that just drives me crazy, you know, you want to look up what the specs are on parts. So you put in to Google the part number and you get companies like All Data or whatever the hell they call themselves will give you this information. But when you try to glean some information off here, the bastards have blocked it all out. They've blurred out all the specs so you can't see what the ratings are. You can read some of the other numbers, you see? You can read this, ratings, 30 volts, 100, whatever. But down here, where all the meat is, they blurred it out. You know, they put the data sheet up and then they want you to pay to read it. And it just drives me crazy. You know, companies that do this crap, I will never ever subscribe to them. I will never buy a part from them. You know, I'm just trying to get a little bit of information and uh, they're making it impossible to get information. Greedy companies that don't want to provide any data at all on you know stuff that should be universally available. It's uh, it used to be you could get anything, but then all these companies got greedy and started wanting you to pay for info. Anyway, here's the inside of this amp. As I say, this is a this is a brute. Look at the size of the power transformer. I mean, this thing this thing is bloody heavy. This amp. Power transistors are in the back here. Look at the size of those suckers. 2SE2174 and what's the 2SA one? Let's see what it is. It's 2SA1170 is the PNP. Even though the amp is a push-pull amplifier, techniques call this a new class A. What they do is they increase the bias to the transistor, so the transistors are always in good conduction. Therefore, they'll never go out of conduction at lower power levels. When you increase the power levels, they drop the bias to increase the efficiency and give you the power of a class AB amp. Now the guy that brought me this unit, of course, 
He sprayed the switch with Neutrol to clean it. It was dripping with Neutrol. It smells like Neutrol. The thing is, he sprayed the switches down on the front here. And you see the switches on the front on this unit here. It's, it's, it's kind of misleading. Because all the switches on the front do is control the little LEDs when you change mode. The actual real signal switching takes place here on these switches in the back. As you'll notice, when I change the input selector switch, you can see that that's this one here. And the tape monitor switch is uh, this one below it, I believe. Yeah, it's the, the one in the back. You can see it moving at the back there. And the phono input is the one in the front. So those are the switches that we have to clean. And because he gave me this amp, I'm going to use this one. I'm going to use the good stuff. We're going to break out the deoxit on this one and give this one a shot of some deoxit cleaner and clean the switches up properly. So let's get the little spray can in here and yeah, we'll get it all the way over like that, I guess, and get in here and give this thing a shot. switch in this position we'll get another shot in here I'll do the same for the other switches. Just gonna shut the power off so I can get in here without uh, short circuiting myself. That was the tape monitor switch. And we'll do also the phono selector switch on this one. And I think this might be easier to get in right into here. And we'll do the volume control while I'm at it. Power on. So here's our specifications on this unit. It's 120 watts per channel and with the size of the power supply in this thing, you know it's gonna be able to produce 120 watts per channel all day long. I mean, this is a, a kick-ass amplifier. The harmonic distortion, 0.003%. Pretty impressive. With a dampening factor of 80. So it's, uh, and it's not a light unit. It weighs around 15 kilograms. So, uh, you know, it's uh, yeah, about 30, 35, almost 40 pounds, this thing. It's a, it's a, it's a heavy weight. It sounds fantastic. I gotta clean the one more switch. I found that the down here, there's a oh, the uh, the less used controls, your balance, bass, treble, and super bass are hidden behind a little glass door. And it is glass because it's got a chip in the glass right there. Not plastic, real glass. It says so right here. It says glass, and it's chipped. Um, I noticed a little bit of a when I when I switch between straight DC, which bypasses the tone control and the tone control board. I noticed 
a little bit of scratchiness. So we're gonna clean that switch too. We'll clean all these switches actually if I can get at them. So to access the board on the bottom, there's this great big cover that can come off. I'm assuming just the red screws will remove this. So let's take out the red screws. See, this is how all stereo gear should be built. With removable panels that you can take off to access. You gotta remove these feet. There's, a, there's an arrow pointing at the foot, so I take it that that means that that has to come off. This is how all equipment should be built. I love this stuff. It's so well engineered. Output transistors are, are right here on the side, accessible if they ever need to be changed. Okay, got uh, it's got some rubber feet on the bottom to prevent if the base ever were to get... Someone's having a temper tantrum. If the base were ever to get put on something that would cause the, the, the screen on the bottom to get bent in, at least it's not gonna make contact with the power capacitors and cause a big boom. Um, here's our switches and our controls here that I can get at to clean. Um, a couple of the controls here are kind of hidden, but that's okay. I don't think the, those controls really weren't dirty. What was, was when I was pressing the switch here. The switch here, if I can get into this, it looks to be a sealed switch. So it could be fun to get into. We'll try getting some contact cleaner into here. See if we can clean up that switch. And if you notice here, the ground screws, which is something that uh, I used to do to units all the time when they were coming in for service, ground screws would actually come loose. But if you notice on here, they've soldered them. So these ground screws are not gonna come loose ever. Saying that, they have come loose. They've soldered the washer, but the screw itself did back its way up a bit. So we'll just tighten those down. And we'll get into this, these switches with some cleaner. I'll use uh, Neutral this time, just because the deox stuff is really expensive. And these switches controls are ones that I'm probably not going to be using much on them. Wherever my can of Neutral is hiding, it's right here on my bench. Hopefully I'm getting some cleaner down there. We'll turn the amp back on. Oh, might help if I turn the power on. That ah, sounds better already. I don't hear it going click anymore. putting the, the contact cleaner, I can actually see it going into the control. That one is the, uh, I guess, the, which one is that? That's the 20 hertz low pass filter. This will be the seven kilohertz high pass filter. Not that I ever intend to use the filters. And what 
is that this is a loud noise control up here. bottom on this unit and button it up so we'll just again power everything down just so that I'm putting this bottom piece in I don't short circuit anything I'll use the aggravating screwdriver just so I can set off some of the PTSD can you believe it? Somebody said that when I use my uh, my cordless screwdriver, I, I I set off their PTSD. One of the unique features on this amp is the tone controls on here. Check this out. It has not only a bass and treble control, it has a super bass control. What does that do? Well, what that does is it gives your bass control a little bit of extra kick, so to speak. It is controlled through the bass control, so if the bass control is turned off or you're in DC mode it won't do anything but listen turn on the bass control now the super bass control I can either set it for 75 or 150 wait till the, wait till the music starts getting a little more bass here let's get something here we go okay so now we got our bass control right the super bass control So you have an extra 10 dB boost on the low end. The bass and treble controls themselves have a minus 7 plus 7 dB on their crossover frequency. And then the super bass has its own maximum 10. And it works even if you've got the regular bass control, I believe, set to zero. So what that means is that you can have a separate bass boost of 12 dB per octave at either 75 or 150 hertz crossover for the super bass. So it's set to the 150 now and this will increase the bass which you can hear. Maybe you can but I can. In addition to
course, the trout. Got a loudness button as well. Got a loudness button. We've got our tone or our tone bypass, straight DC as they call it. That bypasses everything. And you get the subsonic filter for 20 hertz, so that when you put on uh, turntables, you can get rid of the rumble, because all turntables have a certain amount of rumble. No ma doesn't matter how good they are, there's always a certain amount of rumble. Especially if it's a BSR, it stands for bloody shitty rumble, you should know that, right? Um, yeah, so that's, that's that. A high pass filter for old people that can't hear above seven kilohertz anyway, I guess. So you don't annoy your dogs. Uh, mode, stereo, mono, loudness on and off, and of course, balance, right and left. And now that switch is doing what it's supposed to. I don't know if this is supposed to light up on here or not. It says new class A. It doesn't look like, I don't know if that lights or not. Maybe it does. I have to turn off the lights. It kind of looks like that might be a light behind there. <laughs> As you can see, this is all discrete transistors. There's not an IC to be found in this thing. I don't think there's any ICs in this one at all. Um, don't see any. Oh, I lied. There is. There is an IC. It's over in the preamp for the phono. Down, uh, where is it? It's right down there. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there is a little IC that is right down underneath here. It's right over top of that, actually. I don't know if you can see it if I pull this out of the way. Anyway, there's an, there is, trust me, there is one IC, and I got my finger sitting on it right there. Hiding underneath that little capacitor. There you go. That's the only IC that I can see in this thing. There might be one more hidden on that preamp board, but other than that, this thing here looks to be uh, all, all solid state parts. Look at the back of these plugs, the gold connectors on the back. They've got actual plugs soldered into them. Those are obviously for the phono inputs, right? These are the phono inputs. Phono 1 and Phono 2. So using good shielded cable to go over to the preamp board, which is uh, back here. They connect down here. So here's all the, here's the preamp down here for the, for the Phono. Uh, anyway, this thing here draws a lot of juice. The power consumption on this thing is uh, ridiculous. It draws 520, 520 watts. It's a big brute but a very nice big brute. And it's now going to be part of my collection, I think. It's gonna go into my office and swap out my Luxman. My Luxman amp my that I've had for many years, it's a hybrid amp, 60 watts per channel. Love the sound of it. Uh, the Phono preamp needs to be serviced on it, so I'll be servicing that once I get this one in place of it. Um, the problem I'm having with the Luxman amp is the record out selector switch has been giving me problems for the last couple years. So I use it as an input select for my computer for analog recordings for you know doing recordings from reel to reel or cassette or other analog sources and I switch it through the, the because it has a separate switch like this one. This one has a record selector switch so that's important so that I can select the different inputs for what is going to be fed to my computer for um, recording. So um, uh, th that switch has been giving me problems for a while on the Luxman. I gotta play around with it and sometimes it cuts out and I gotta go back and start over again if it cuts out halfway through a recording. So I think I'll be retiring that one until I can get around to uh, fixing it. Uh, the switches aren't available so I'll try cleaning them again. I cleaned them years ago and they lasted for a while but they've uh, started acting up again so I think this one's going to go in place of that one. Anyway, let's get the top on this thing, get this one done. Thanks for watching.